Hi everybody, uh, Jerry here. Um, some pretty good interesting stuff. Um, just tying up over here. I'm um, getting ready to fish and actually found some stingrays um, at night. They were out really prolific. And um, most interesting thing is I took uh, a UCO steel rod and a South Bend Perfectorino, I believe loaded with 15 pound mono. And I did hook into a nice size ray, got them up to the pier and uh, jigging off the bottom, got them up to the pier. And I got the play by play. So uh, right now, here we go right into the fight and uh, let's see what happened. Happened, okay. So I'm already hooked up here and uh, he got into the rip and is taking that uh, with the outgoing current. And he's uh, between him moving and those wide wings and the current. Um, he's taking a lot of line, already took a lot of line out. And I uh, hooked into him with a jig on the bottom. Um, interesting uh, enough, coming up here, uh, I'm trying to thumb the spool to slow him down. And you really want to keep that uh, spool wet and it was dry. And right here I have a burnout. Now I'm using this here steel rod and uh, it's actually performing great. It has a beautiful arc on it. Um, has a three guide, it's guided up, got about uh, three guides on it, but it has a beautiful bend, a lot of power to it, and uh, the reel that I'm using is a South Bend Perfectorino, um, they're traditionally used for casting for the class of relatively uh, heavy baits, uh, or heavy crank baits a lot, or worming on the bottom. Uh, or just working top waters, uh, uh, basically old-fashioned um, largemouth bass fishing. But well, you can use these things for anything. Um, if they can handle ray uh, and ripping current, they pretty much so can handle anything. And I'll do a video about the reel in the future, as well as the rod. And uh, but right now I'm just trying to concentrate on getting this fish in. But you can just see it. the rod has a beautiful, beautiful arc. A lot of power it's made of of uh, steel um why they don't make rods with steel anymore is beyond me it's relatively light the rod's only about uh it's four and a half feet at, at most couldn't be more than five feet possibly four feet and uh over here you can see um when i'm cranking what happened is after that blowout uh the spool had overrun so basically uh, I had a bit of a backlash um, but what I did was I almost had to overwind my line over that backlash and uh, when he would go out and get to the end I would have to hold it steady because of the knot in there would, the potential to break is relatively high so I'm holding it down with my thumb as I'm cranking until I had it lined up just right. And you can see the performance of the rod is just very impressive. Um, just getting them in here. He's coming in closer. And uh, okay, let's get a couple cranks in here. Now I cut a bit of these uh, clips out. It took a nice period of time to get them in. Um, I missed the initial strike and run, but I got most of the run in there. So uh, I think I don't think you want to see uh, 20 minutes of fit. Check out the spool now. It's overlaid. There we go. We got it working. <laughs> um, but I don't think you want to see 20 minutes of uh, just a reel and a fish in. So I did cut out parts of the clip and I kept the clear parts in and. Uh, he should be coming up soon, um, but I think that uh, cutting that stuff out would be better. But uh, sometimes, you know, giving him power, the belly up the rod, get a good butt, and uh, I think I got a good visual on him coming up now. And he definitely, I think I get a good sight at him now in uh, probably less than a minute. You should see the fish coming up. As for the line I'm using, it's really great stuff. It's just a uh, Stren uh, 
15 pound strand monofilament and it, it's just holding up um, a great uh, that fish hanging in the current like that is uh, some pretty heavy duty fishing so the line is holding up the rods holding up the reel on the other hand uh, if it was wet I should have put a leather thumb drag on there um, you can easily hold the bass but a big ray like that caught in the current takes off like a kite and uh, extremely difficult to gain control how I gain control of the situation I don't know but I'm gonna cut here and here he comes I think we're gonna have him coming up now so here he is right here now I cut out a bit of clip there got close get a good look at him but he's working in now I think the quick uh, uh, fella Phil um, he was there uh, nice to talk to him as I was working the fish and uh, gave me a couple jigs to get back I only brought two jigs one or two jigs with me he gave me another jig to uh, I did hook into another one afterwards and uh, didn't get him as I didn't get him close in like this guy so we got this on tape for you to see but beautiful creature um, getting him up uh, really don't see that happening um, you can see me double paddling get a little bit and partially I have to do that because of that blowout there's some <laughs> line beneath there that's kind of uh, wedging the crank but you can see he's a fair sized ray nice sized ray and uh, these Kaunos rays give a great fight they actually will take runs I've had them break water I had one on the beach this season could have sworn it was a tuna um, the way he was uh, running darting in and out and jumping and as I got him in I realized it was a ray um, so they do give you an, a, a beautiful fight um, playing them in a rip current like this is a, a, another ball game but here he is now get a good idea of the size I think his wingspan is nearly about as wide as the, the rod I was using you want to be careful when you handle in your line like this and uh, Phil was there I'm trying to get a good picture of him now this is another ball game here there's no way you're gonna get him up on this pier um, you have to use a real heavy duty net and I'm not gonna get the fish and so I'm just trying to undo my lore they're just beautiful beautiful creatures um, just uh, in the current there he's gonna go on his way soon and uh, there's really nothing I can do this strand holds up strand line holds up great beautiful fish definitely his wingspans as wide as that, that uh, rod that I was using and it's about I think the rods about four feet across but he's about oh who knows 10 feet down so now I'm using this bag here you still got to be careful so I can get a good pull kind of if it'll protect your hand but you can see that trend line is just great stuff and there we go did I get yeah, there he goes <laughs> okay uh, thanks Phil and uh, that that was a uh, pretty wild stuff I figured I'd share the moment with you guys um, do all kinds of stuff so okay real quick I'm gonna <laughs> this is the was talking with a blowout I got down to that and trying to undo it but uh Thanks for watching and uh, did some other fishing with the steel rod too. And uh, here's just a clip. Oh, turn on the light. And uh, great for fluke fishing with uh, go go off the bottom, a little bead weight, and you know, had a bunch of fun uh, catching these guys as well. But we'll save that for another day. Thanks for watching. Please like, dislike, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, and remember always, fish your way. And have a great afternoon, evening, day, night, um, noon, lunch, dinner, um, wherever you are. And thanks again for watching.